All right. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an email account. In order to do this, you need to have uh, purchased your own domain hosting. Uh, with Bluehost is what I personally use. Your hosting comes with unlimited email accounts. So you simply log in and set up the email account. And setting up an email account, account is two steps. One is creating the email the email box and two is actually setting up your client to retrieve the email from that box so let's get started you go to bluehost.com and you'll simply click on control panel login now when you get here you'll see uh, where, where you can log into your account simply put your uh, your login information which should be your domain name and whatever password you you've chosen uh, if I set up your domain and hosting uh, it, I've emailed you both of them but you simply enter it in and click login alright this is your dashboard once you're or your cPanel in Bluehost once you're logged in you're going to want to scroll down to right here email accounts and click that all right, next you'll be at this screen where you actually are going to set up the email account. All right, uh, if you pay attention right here is where you would type in the name. So, for example, I'm using my billwithchris.com. If you click this arrow drop down, it'll actually show you a list of all your domains. Me, I have multiple domains, so I can set up an email for any account on this dashboard. Uh, remember, with your hosting, you may you may or may not have more than one dot com so in the control panel is where you can set up an email address for any dot com or any domain that you have purchased so here we'll just say uh, new guy give it a password match it okay uh, it'll give you errors if it's not good or if it doesn't match uh, and then of course allow you to generate your password on your own uh, or correct it right here you can set the the limit to your inbox uh, if it's going to be for you you're probably going to want to keep it at unlimited if not you want to limit uh, depending on your hosting if you don't have unlimited storage you don't want to have all these accounts that have unlimited access you know where people are receiving files that are megabytes large and it's just going to fill your hosting and eventually you'll have to pay for it or it'll slow it'll slow access down to a lot of the files that you need so try to keep it at a minimal for people who may be interns or I don't know don't need that much uh, but I use unlimited for me 250 is a good basis to start you can drop it down to 100 whatever the case is anyways after that you're going to hit create account all right once you click create account you'll see it right here it say account has been created and you can scroll down and see there it is the account I just created new guy billwithchris.com um, and he's ready to be configured so now you have a mailbox you do not have your email client set up yet to retrieve the mail so at this point you can give out your email address and people can send you emails but you will not get them until you set up your email client to retrieve them. It's just like if you had a mailbox at the end of your driveway, the post office is going to fill that box up, but it's up to you to walk to that box and retrieve the mail and bring it into your home. The same thing, the same thing works on the internet. So this is your mailbox. You now need an email client to retrieve this mail and bring it down to your desktop, laptop, or smartphone and a couple email clients there's a lot of them out there you could just google email client but some of the tops are uh, Microsoft Outlook uh, Mozilla Thunderbird or just the default mail application in Mac any of those three will do you just fine you can hit the ground running uh, there's others out there with more features that you can try out as well but what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna click right here where it says more then you're going to configure email client. It's going to bring you to this window, which if you're on a PC and you're running Outlook, you can use any of these links and it'll automatically configure it for you. 
So it makes it pretty simple uh, for for you on a on a PC. All you have to do is make sure Outlook is closed before you click on this link, and it actually walks you through the prompts and sets it up for you. Uh, uh, the difference between IMAP and POP3 is with IMAP, if you have the same inbox going to multiple devices, when you read an email on one device, it's marked as read on all devices. Whereas POP3, you can access the email from your smartphone and read it, but when you go home to your laptop, it'll be marked as unread because POP3 looks at what emails have been activated per device. So just because you read it on your smartphone doesn't mean it's going to be marked as read on your computer. Uh, so that's just one way. If you're just using it for personal use, I would recommend IMAP. Um, and here are the settings. If you're going to set it up manual, which is what I, I, I do, because uh, I don't have a PC and I, I run a Mac. Uh, these are the settings that I would recommend that you use. And you put those in exactly as they're shown. Depending on your email client, it may not say exactly, you know, incoming mail server, outgoing mail server, but it'll be pretty close. Just make sure you enter this information as it's displayed and you should be good to go. And now uh, you can access your email from wherever you've configured your email client. Um, and you can repeat these steps for any email address at any time if you need to add one. And uh, here's one thing. Once they're added, you can also go back and if you wanted to, you could delete it. Um, somebody leaves the company or you know no longer needs it, delete it there. Change the quota is this 250 megabytes, you can up the size or decrease it. And of course, change password is self-explanatory. So there you have it. That's how you set up an email account and pull it down with an email client to your desktop, laptop, or smartphone.